Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Grit, Give, Recognize, Implement Time podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Nathanson, and I'm very excited for this topic. It's a question that's come up a lot recently. So today, we're going to talk about the pursuit of perfection versus the need to be perfect. What does that mean? A lot of times, we have this need to be perfect. I strive for perfection. I strive for excellence. I work hard. I want to succeed. I want to show people what I can do. I've got to get all of this done, and it's got to meet this standard that I hold for myself. We often want to be absolutely perfect in everything that we do. What happens, however, when we're not perfect? What happens when we don't get something done? When we quote, unquote, fail? When we miss the mark? We beat ourselves up. We question, why, can I be, why can't I be good enough? Why? Why am I this way? Why didn't it work out? I need to do better. I should have done better. It shouldn't have happened. Come on, stupid. You know, we may even call ourselves names. We beat ourselves up because we have the need to be perfect. It leaves absolutely no room for error. Perfection by definition, everything all the time, always done, 100% correct to expectations that we have. The issue that we see with this is exactly what we just talked about and what comes out. We are hard on ourselves. We beat ourselves up. We get caught in a negative downward spiral of non-serving feelings and thoughts that just eats away at us because we feel like there's absolutely no wiggle room, no margin for error. So when I get asked this question of how do we overcome that, what I do like to put back towards clients is this. I agree with the pursuit of perfection, not the need to be perfect because of what we just talked about. So let's talk about the difference. Let's talk about what the pursuit of perfection means. The pursuit of perfection is very simple. We strive for excellence. We want to hit the mark. We want everything to work out the way that we would like it to work. And we align all of our actions and our mentalities towards that pursuit of meeting that goal of perfection. The difference comes with acceptance, understanding, and self-compassion because while we are in pursuit of striving for the highest level of accomplishment, we recognize it's the pursuit. I can strive for it. That is what I am aiming for. But there's an acknowledgement that happens that we are human. And by definition, we are not perfect. We have a dual nature within us. The good, the bad, the negative, positive. As you hear me call it, the serving and the non-serving. We don't always hit the mark. Let's use a sport analogy. For example, let's talk about football. There's literally one team one year in the entirety of the history of the National Football League, even before it was the NFL, that one team was perfect. Let's think about that. Out of 100 years, and I apologize for getting exactly when football came into existence, uh, but I do know the Steelers were founded around 1933, so let's take it a little bit before then. We're close to 100. So I think if we look at, the, at that and we look at one single team, one year had a perfect season, the Miami Dolphins. Does that perhaps put it in perspective? Even if we look at the most recent example when the Patriots, they went perfect in the regular season and in the playoffs until they lost the Super Bowl. They were undefeated. Even in boxing, talk a lot about being undefeated. Right? But we have a lot of contenders who are undefeated, but eventually that loss comes. Perfection is not a part of who we are 100% of the time. It's one of the hardest things perhaps to accept is that I am not always going to be perfect. And you know what? That's okay. Because when I embrace that and I accept it and I give myself the understanding 
I alleviate all that pressure and the stress, that non-serving energy that drains me when I miss the mark. I alleviate all that. Now, I don't have to be happy that I missed the mark, but there's a difference between going, yeah, you know, I wish I would have done better to why does that happen? Why can't I? That shouldn't happen. It should never be that way. You know what? And I just beat myself up and I torture myself and torment myself for weeks on end because of one small thing versus, yeah, you know what? I'm not happy it went that way. However, I can learn and I can grow from it and I can self set myself up for greater success in the future by leveraging this experience to help put into place things that would mitigate that. Give me a greater chance of succeeding more often than I currently am to the highest degree that I want. That's really the crux of it, is pursuing perfection versus the need to be perfect. It's the impact that it has on us. One thing that we also have as a factor in this is other people. We naturally compare ourselves to others. This is something that we talked about very early on in the show. It's a social comparison that we make. We presume others are perfect. We presume others have it all together that they don't struggle with what we struggle with. We see what they want us to see. Social media doesn't have a whole lot of quote, quote, real life in it. We just show the good stuff, the serving. That's it. We don't see the bad, the ugly, the real life side of it. It's not shared. Society naturally tends to tuck that away. Say it doesn't exist. It's the same when we talk about it. When we look at other people and we make presumptions that we're not doing something right because we're not like them, it plays a role that doesn't allow us to accept and embrace them. You know what? Even that person we think is perfect, guess what? They're not. They're not. No single person on this planet is perfect. It makes us human just like the rest of us. We all share in that. If we can embrace that, it is free. It's free. It opens us up to say, what are the things that do set me up for success? What are those factors that I can practice day in and day out that alleviate the possibility for me slipping up, making that mistake? I can look at it in that way and have that serving outlook of these are the best practices that allow me to be at my best and set me up for success to do that. That is what the pursuit of perfection is all about. Can I set myself up to successfully mitigate the mistakes because I embrace who I am, all parts of me, and I know what works best for me to be able to put them into play and put my best foot forward, to be able to hit that mark of what I want. When we feel like we have to be perfect, we need to be perfect. We don't give ourselves the room, that margin of error, to not hit the I'll end up with this. Excuse me, I'll end with this. In Ironman competitions, there's a lot to it. It's a very long day. You've got three different sports, and then you really have nutrition in there as well as this four sport for triathlon. You know, I can sleep very well, I can eat incredibly well, and I can fuel my body properly before the race. I can swim well, I can bike well, and I can run well. And everything that's in my control can go well. However, I can't control the weather. So maybe there's more wind on the bike course. Maybe it's choppier on the swim, and perhaps there's no shade and incredibly hot on the run. All these factors that I cannot control can come in and make my time slower on that day. If all I'm focused on is that need to be perfect, and perfection means hitting this mark, let's say that is a time goal of triathlon and iron. I may not meet those because of the weather that I cannot control. Even if I've done everything right, I still may not meet it because of those factors. So if I feel like I absolutely need to be perfect, I may beat myself up in that instance because I didn't hit that time. Goal. I didn't do enough. I didn't push, push hard enough, excuse me. I didn't push through the wind. I didn't drink enough fluids. But when we look at the pursuit of perfection, the view 
slips? Did I swim to the best of my abilities in these conditions? Did I bike and run as well to the best of my ability following my plan in these conditions? Because if I did, then I can find happiness in that. I ran a perfect race to plan. What I was capable on that day may not be that time that I was looking for, but again, we can't control everything. It's just one illustration of when we have the pursuit of perfection, it makes it easier to deal with things when they are not in our control. Things that are out of our control that may cause us to miss the mark. So within athletics, it's a great example of this because if we pursue perfection and we set ourselves up for success, in it, we're not only going to have a better chance of hitting that mark and that goal, but we're also going to have an easier time of reaching this in a less stressful way versus when I feel like I need to be perfect, I put too much stress on me. I put too much pressure on me. And when we are stressed out and we have all that pressure, you know what happens? You know what that does? It tightens us up. It makes us less flexible. When we talk about athletics, it puts more pressure on us. I may check my watch, see my pacing. I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not where I want to be. It's not going to happen. This actually has a physical detrimental impact on us. The same is true in the workplace. We may be more prone to making mistakes. We may be more prone to snapping at others. And we may be more prone to not thinking clearly. So I agree with the pursuit of perfection versus the need to be perfect. So until the next time, remember to be the movement in your life.